Hello, this is Wes Fryer, and I am recording this on the 12th of September 2011 on a 15-hour flight back from Shanghai, China to Atlanta and then on to Oklahoma City. And this is an image of the Shanghai Museum, which I had an opportunity to visit briefly today on my last day in Shanghai. And there are probably about 12 galleries inside the museum, and I actually was just able to visit one, the Coin Museum, but while some of this information is fresh on my brain. I thought I would use this time to record a little bit and tell you a little bit about what I learned. The museum is free for entry. It's open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and there were two entrances, one for tour groups and then another one for individuals, but after you pass through security you went on in and it was beautifully architected with a large central courtyard that went all the way up and you took the escalators or the stairs, depending on your preference, up and up uh, to the level that you wanted. And we were going up to the fourth level to the coin collection. This is an example of some of the oldest coins that are in the collection, and they're actually shaped uh, like a spade or like a farm implement. And I had never heard of coins being shaped like this, so I thought this was pretty amazing. As you can see, there are not Arabic or, or uh, you know English letter or numbers or, or words that are below this. They're just in Chinese, so I can't tell you exactly the year of this, but this is definitely uh, thousands of years uh, before the birth of Christ. Very, very old, and, and I think perhaps the oldest examples of coins that are there in the museum. A lot of the coins that are in the museum that predate minting have a characteristic hole in the center, either a round hole, as you see here, or a square hole. These are some coins with a square hole in the center, and I think these were made of copper, as you can see, some of the uh, effects of, uh, uh, of, a, of corrosion or, or you know chemical reaction there taking place on the coins. The squares and circles in the center, I think, were there to assist in the removal of the coin from the mold, and we'll see some of those molds here in just a little bit. I guess after they had had coins that were shaped like spades, the uh, Chinese emperors had coins that were shaped like swords or like knives. And so these were coins. One of the interesting things to read in the pretty limited English explanations that were available in the display was that there were, in some cases, hundreds of years of chaos where the Chinese economy had descended into a barter system and they didn't have a centralized uh, currency. There, there was one era we read about where there were 400 years that, that kind of went by before they stabilized the currency again. But you can see that at the bottom of these sort of sword looking coins, they have a circle and you know that of course that's what we more characteristically think of as a coin. Here's another example of an unusually shaped coin and these are I think kind of looking like Chinese characters, but these were ornate. And uh, again, kind of like the coins that looked like they were spades. I guess these more look like uh, an object uh, rather than, you know, just a circle. These are some of the few examples of gold coins. And I think these are shards. Uh, some of these kind of appear to be, you know, more like a, a gold bill. Um, sort of, you know, flat and beaten, but they had the ornate uh, imprint on them of Chinese characters. This was perhaps the most interesting coin, or maybe second, I guess. The Genghis Khan one that's coming up is my favorite. But this is a horse hoof coin. And so this was in the shape of a horse hoof. It was the only example like this. And again, I guess they took some objects that were known and then created coins in those shapes. There were lots and lots of coins like this that just didn't have any English explanation or maybe just mentioned some dynasties. Um, had square holes, so these were before the time of minting. These were created by hand. And it was really obvious to Gail and I who were there that you know, our knowledge of Chinese history was quite limited. So just you know, saying the name of the dynasty or you know, the years and just didn't, didn't mean a whole lot but just lots and lots of coins. And with all these, it was fascinating to, to wonder who had minted this, where was it minted, what it had purchased, who had touched it, you know, where had it gone. These are coins that I thought looked like axe heads. 
There were both silver and gold coins like this, and these, in many cases, apparently were not very pure because when you look really close on the side, you could see bubbles, and it looked like that was probably caused by impurities in the metal. Now we're starting to get into paper uh, currency, and I wish I could tell you exactly the year. I didn't, I didn't see on here. I'm thinking that there was there was some paper currency in China uh, before the, before the birth of Christ, like a thousand BC, but I'm not positive. Uh, this is a a print, or or uh, you know the design and pattern that was used to stamp onto paper to make paper currency. And this is one of the oldest examples of paper currency that was there in the museum. Here's a couple other printed paper currency not molds, but patterns that were used for printing. And here's an example of a couple gold coins. I think that these were minted coins. I don't know that these were hand struck. And I thought this was kind of a cool picture with the, the two folks looking, looking in. This was uh, one of the displays that was in glass that was sort of in the middle of the section. Most of them were on the wall, but some of the more notable pieces were in glass in the middle. Here's a close-up of uh, some of the ones on display in the center, and you can see the central square there in the middle and the Chinese characters. And, uh, you know, about in in the, um, well, certainly the 20th century, I think it was more maybe in the 1700s, and then once we get into the 1900s, we started to see a lot of other currencies, but more paper currencies being used. But before we get to that, we have some examples of molds. So here we have a mold that was used to create some of those knife or sword coins that we saw earlier. Here's an example of a mold used to create the rounded coins with the square holes in the middle. And you can see how the hot metal was poured in. And I think those squares were put in, in large part to make it easier to remove the coins from the mold. This is a stacked uh, series of square molds. And so my impression is that the hot metal was poured into these and then you know they they were on both sides so it was able to have the design on both both sides and so maybe you were making several layers of coins when you were creating them with this method and this was a press that was used I don't know if it was with the same uh, uh, materials that we just saw but it was used to press the coins together uh, during the cooling process some of the most important or uh, not important, some of the most interesting currencies that we saw were these. And uh, as you can see, there's some Arabic numbers there, 1907. This was drawn on a German bank that was operating in Shanghai at the time. This is a note from 1900. And this said $5 uh, from the Shanghai Banking Corporation. So my impression is that this bank would have been operating in China and creating its own currency. So you had uh, different entities and corporations creating their own forms of money at that time. This is from the Chartered Bank of India, Australia, and China from 1918. So this would have been right before the crash of the stock market. Uh, again, my knowledge of Chinese history is really limited, but I do know with the colonial powers uh, being there, the opium wars took place in, in the mid-1800s, forcing China to be open to the West uh, and I think many would argue for the exploitation of the West. By the West, I don't know how you could deny that since we were the Brits, I, I think, primarily, although maybe there were others, were forcing the Chinese to accept opium as payment for many of their goods, which led to widespread addiction and eventually led you know, to, to them being kicked out and all colonial powers being kicked out and the closing of China. That was the end of the uh, Chinese currency section. Now we're going to go just into a few images uh, from the Silk Road collection. And so <clears throat> this was really, really interesting. The monetary systems were different in these countries. A lot of these are Central Asian countries. One of the first ones that we saw was this coin of Alexander III. So I think this was from Persia, uh, from uh, modern-day Iran. And again, just amazing to think about how old this coin is. Where was this created? What did this purchase? Where did it go? You know, did it cross the Silk Road? Um, you know, what what was the history of this coin? If this coin could tell us some stories, what would it tell? 
This was my favorite coin in the museum. It was a, a Genghis Khan coin and had his name, I think, on both sides. So it was from the early 1200s, and it said there are very, very few coins like this that bear his name. And Genghis Khan, um, <laughs> I know from my history at reading a little bit on at Who Hot Restaurant, uh, which we go to sometimes in Manhattan, Kansas, uh, really didn't create a dynasty uh, once he died. Um, they didn't preserve to preserve his kingdom, but of course he's extremely famous. It was interesting, Gail, who was with me, said when they were in western China and they were asking their guides about Genghis Khan, they didn't know about him. They hadn't heard of him. So real interesting about how you know what history is known and, and not, not known. Um, these are examples of minted coins, and they look like Chinese coins to me because they have dragons on them, but there was not an English translation, so I don't know what country they were from. I thought these these coins looked like they might have been Spanish. They uh, had this guy on the horse and uh, looked like, you know, they were from Europe. But again, don't know where, but these were coins that would have traversed the Silk Road. And and you know what? They probably weren't. They were probably from one of the Stans or, you know, somewhere in Central Asia. Um, they're probably not European, uh, but who knows? Um, if you read Chinese and can read those characters, uh, maybe you can leave a comment here and let me know where they're from. Uh, these were coins, I am pretty sure, that were at the at the end that were Arabic. And one of the things it did say in English was that the Arabic coins did not have uh, faces and people on them because the Arabs who were Islamic considered that to be idolatry. So this is a final image of some of the statues outside the Shanghai Museum. And if you ever have a chance to go, I highly encourage you to do so. It was fascinating. I hope I can go back one day and see even more.